To create your pocket, start by folding in the edges and the bottom end of the pocket first with the one centimeter seam allowance. Make sure to have these edges already pre-overlocked or zigzag stitched just to make sure there's not many raw threads. Then go ahead and fold down the upper edge. This is gonna make the top of your pocket. And now we're just gonna sew right along the top here. Over at your sewing machine, just begin with the back tack and sew straight across the top of your pocket. Now you can have the pocket on the inside or the outside of your bag. So get the body panel and place your pocket over the top of where the notches are for the pocket placement. Pin this down to make sure the pocket doesn't go anywhere. And what we're gonna be doing is sewing around the side down across the bottom and back up the side, leaving the top open. So beginning with the back tack, move all the way down, keep your needle in, lift your foot up and pivot, and go straight back up the other side, ending with the back tack, leaving the top edge open. You've got your pocket. Now placing your outer piece over the top of your pocket panel, with the right sides together, matching at your center notch and just using some pins to pin all along this top edge. Go ahead and do this for the other side of your bag. Now we'll be sewing along these two curved lines. So beginning with the back tack, begin your sewing along here, making sure to take your pins out as you go and continue on with your second panel as well. To get this curve looking really nice and flat, what we need to do is notch along the seam allowance. So just making small little slices around about two to three millimeters from your seam. And do this along both sides of your panels. Now fold them outwards. And what we're gonna be doing is pushing the seam allowance towards your lining panel. And from here, we're going to be sewing an edge stitch. So the point of an edge stitch is that it just helps all of the seam allowance roll towards one particular side of the fabric, which makes for a much cleaner edge. And as you go, make sure to pull the fabric on either side to ensure that you're not actually catching any of the excess fabric. And this is what it should look like when you take it out and roll the seam towards where it wants to sit. Now we're gonna be securing both panels together with a basting stitch around the outside. So begin with matching up your center notches, your sides and your other side with pins. So we can go around this edge and make sure none of it moves. For a basting stitch, you want to keep your stitch length at a 4.5 or a 5 and you just move around the edge making sure to keep all your pieces nice and flat so there's no bubbling. Now as you can see here, it does seem like there is a little bit of bubbling or excess fabric, but you'll find with most woven fabrics that even if you just place the iron, the steam iron, over the top, it actually shrinks itself inwards. Um, and this is actually a great way of getting that extra fabric to shrink back in on itself and to have a nice flat piece of fabric to sew with. Now we're gonna move on to the shoulder straps. So beginning at the base of the bag, we're going to be stitching the two straight sections together just with a back tack, sewing all the way through with a back tack on the other end. And now we'll just be pressing this seam open. And now that you've pressed the center base seam of your shoulder straps open, Grab your body bag pieces to find the center panel at the bottom and match them up with the base seam of the shoulder straps. 
And basically what you're going to be doing is sandwiching the bag body between the shoulder straps. The shoulder straps are both going to be facing right sides together with your bag in between those. You want to begin by pinning this particular area and slowly moving around the base of the bag, pinning and moving around the curve, making sure to sandwich all three layers together. You're gonna go up the shoulder strap, all the way around the tip of the strap and all the way back down until you reach the notch on the other side. So you can see here, we've gone all around the base, all around the top of the strap to the notch. So we're gonna begin sewing at the notch and around the top of the strap, around the base of the bag, all the way up the other strap and down back to the notch on the other side. Take your time sewing around the curve and the point of the strap. When you actually get down to where the bag starts to be sandwiched between the two shoulder straps, just take your time curving around the base curves just to make sure you're catching all of the layers of fabric that you need to get. Something else that might help with going around those more curved seams is actually being able to lift up your foot and slowly pivot around. Now we're going to be bagging out the straps, but to get a really nice point, we just want to trim off some excess fabric. And we're going to do that by snipping relatively close to the seam and adding some notches around the curved part. This just helps with getting a really nice curve and point. So this is what your bag should be looking like now. And this is how you're going to start turning out your shoulder straps, just poking through at the end. Now you can use the tip of your scissors to actually make sure all the fabric is being pushed in to a point so you get a nice point at the end of your shoulder strap. Now to get a really sharp edge on something that's actually been bagged out, you need to spend some time manipulating the fabric between your fingers and making sure that you're rolling out as much excess fabric to the point where you can see the stitching lines. So make sure to do this on either side and your point and you can only do small sections at a time. So just spend that time rolling out each seam, pressing, moving on to the next section, rolling out and pressing again. Now you can also press around the seam of the bag, just pulling out to make sure you're not overlapping any of your fabric and you're able to get the nose of the iron right around the curve to make sure that that design element stands out. Now to attach the other side of the bag. With your outer facing outwards and your lining facing inwards, you can see this because the edge stitch is facing inwards. Let's match up our center notch with the center notch of the outer strap. Now it's only gonna be attaching the body of the bag to the outer strap. The inner strap is just staying by itself at the moment. We'll get to hand sewing that later. So just do the same procedure of moving that around the curve and pinning it. Now let's sew those pieces together. So what we're going to do is start with the back tack at the notch point of the bag on the side and slowly move around the curve and the base of the bag and back up the other side. With the other edge of the shoulder strap that we haven't attached yet, Press in the seam allowance all along that edge. And then get some pins and fold in that edge because we'll be hand sewing along this seam. So make sure that you're able to cover any visible stitching lines of the previous line that we just did and pin all around the edge. Until you've reached the other side. So what we're going to be doing here is called a slip stitch. So it's basically 
an invisible stitch in between the layers of fabric. So you can see here that I'm actually only catching the inner parts of the fabric. The needle isn't piercing the outer of the fabric, so it's not like a running stitch. So just continue stitching a slip stitch all along this seam, all around the base, and back up the other end. And that's it. Now you just tie the straps however you want them to be tied at the top, whichever is a good length for you, and you're done. <laughs>